Hello, good morning as I emerge from the undergrowth like David Bellamy. <laughs> How are you? I'm Rachel and what I have here is just one absolutely huge scented pelagonium. Now I'm not sure what variety it is because it was given to me as a cutting um, but if I rub the leaves it's absolutely gorgeous. It's kind of a mixture of Turkish delight so you've got that rose water You've got autumn berries and kind of citrus scents as well. And during the summer, it was an absolute mass of bubblegum pink flowers. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I definitely want to keep it for next year. So now that I've turned my heating on for the first time this year, I think it dropped to about two degrees one night this week. Um, I'm definitely going to bring it in because they don't like the frost. They don't like the wet and they don't like it too cold either. So it's absolutely gorgeous and it's huge. <laughs> so first things first, when I was outside, I just double checked it over for stowaways. So that's what you'll need to do if you want to keep your uh, geraniums from, from this year, um, take them over winter so that they're beautiful for next year, the next summer. So check it for stowaways. So you just wanna make sure that there are no slugs, uh, no snails, no aphids, because what, what you don't want to do is bring it into your house and then have an infestation on your house plants. So I think I'm probably going to find a few over the next few days as well, but I'm happy that most of them are off. So now I can bring it inside. The next thing you need to do is to take a clean pair of secateurs and we want to just reduce it by about a third to a half. Now this normally feels really, really cruel and you think that you're going to absolutely kill your plant, but I promise you that you won't. So these are pretty hardy little things and you can do this with all the, all the um, geranium varieties and all the types. So you've got your um, ivy leaf trailing ones, you've got the zonal uh, varieties, you've got um, the regal ones and you've got these scented pelagoniums as well. So I'm just reducing it by about a half to a third. Oh, that's a bit of a tough one. And as I said, it does feel a little bit cruel and like you might be killing it. But trust me, these, these little guys are so, so hardy, so tough. So during Victorian times, they would reduce them by half, take them out of the pots, take all the soil off of the roots, wrap them in newspaper, and then they would stick them under the bed. And there would be just enough life in that small root ball to keep it going through the winter. And then in the spring, when they brought it out, new little shoots, they'd put it up, new little shoots would come through and they'd get the same display that they did the summer before. Okay, so there's a few more to come off. So while I'm doing that, I would love to know about your garden. Do you, do you have a garden? Do you do window boxes? Do you prefer herbs? Do you have any vegetables at all? What sort of size is your plot? How, how do you garden? It's always fascinating to find out other people's tips and tricks. And what I love about gardening is that there isn't just one way to do everything. We've all got our own little things that work for us, perhaps in the area that we live because of the climate, perhaps just something that's been passed down from generation to generation. So please do put your hints and tips in the comments below. We always love to hear from you. And if you've had any amazing results this year, then stick a photo in. We'd let, you know, I'm always taking photos of my garden and I'm sure you are too. So if anything was particularly good, something you want to brag about, something you're really proud about, let us know. Okay, there's a few more around the back to come off, but I'll leave those for a bit later. So I've got a beautiful pile of very healthy, let me get to one side, of very healthy leaves here, beautifully scented as I said. So there are various things that you can do with these. 
They make great foliage. So if you've still got something in the garden like cosmos or dahlias, they make a great background foliage for those. Pick those, give them as little poses or maybe just put them by, by your bed to cheer you up in the morning. So that's the first thing you can do. I've also heard of people putting these in with caster sugar to scent the caster sugar to flavour it and then used in pavlovas. Not one I've tried myself. Um, if you've got any other ideas for scented geranium leaves, then again, put them in the comments. Let us know. It's great to share all these tips and hints. So another thing you can do is to take cuttings. Now, technically, we are a little bit late in the year to do this, but I think you've got all these cuttings, you've got all these, all these stems, all these leaves. It does seem a bit of a shame to just throw them away. So I'm going to show you now how to take some cuttings. They might work, they might not. What you can do if you're, if you're not too keen about trying it at this time of year, then save the video and you can play it again so you can be reminded of how to do it kind of mid spring and, or, or kind of early autumn. They are the best times to do it. But I'm going to give it a go because really what have I got to lose? So I'm just going to pick through for a really healthy looking stem. So I like the look of this one. I'm going to take off these leaves here and then just using a sharp knife, I'm going to cut it just, or not on this woody part, but here, just on this fleshy part, just below the leaf. So I'm going to leave that leaf on just for the moment so I know where I'm cutting. And I'm cutting just below the leaf, the sharp, clean knife and then take that leaf off. Now, some people do use potting, um, hormone potting powder, but I don't find you do. I do find that there's enough, enough growth hormones in that little bit there to produce leaves. So there's quite a few leaves on that. I've taken it away from its original water source, the mother plant. So I just wanna take those leaves off so it can still carry on supporting itself. And I'm just gonna leave those on and I'm going to take off that growing tip. Just going to pinch it out like that. And what that does, that tells the plant not to carry on producing um, growing up, but it's going to encourage it to produce growing down and to produce those leaves. So then I take uh, just a pot of compost just using a stick from the garden, just on the outside edge, make a hole, pop that in, firm it down. And then what I'll do with the other ones that are left on the table, I'll do exactly the same. I can maybe put sort of another three or four around the edge. And if you keep it to the edge, that's a bit warmer there than if you put it in the middle. Then I will put that on a bit very quick water, be very, very sparing with the water, just about a teaspoonful, if that. Then I'll put that on a nice, warm, sunny windowsill. You can, if you want, cover it over. Some people cover it over just with a, with a clear plastic bag. Keep that on a windowsill. And next spring, all going well, that should have rooted and then I'll be ready to pop them up and hopefully it will be as gorgeous as this one. So this is all covered. So now what I need to do with this is to put it in a nice cool light room. So like a conservatory maybe, a spare room, sort of a loft room that you don't use too much and that will last all through the winter and then come, some, come spring you'll start seeing the new growth coming through and give it a good feed in the spring and then that will come that will all be beautiful mass of flowers again all going well hopefully <laughs> so just with regards to water, watering over the winter over the winter they don't like it wet and soggy so just a just a very very slightly water it if you feel you need to maybe sort of once every month really every sort of three to four weeks um be very very sparing with the water that's what 
that's what will kill them. So that's how to overwinter your pelargoniums and geraniums. Please, if you've got any other tips, how do you do it? Please just let us know in the comments. We always love to hear from you. And just before I go, I want to share this with you. So you may remember that a few weeks ago I did um, a session where we were planting up spring bulbs for indoor colour. So these are the bulbs that I planted. You can see that the roots have all grown down. The leaves have all produced and look, I've got some buds just forming. So what I'm going to do, I've been keeping that in the shed um, on a cold windowsill. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to let that one grow a little bit more. And then probably next week or so, I will bring that in and I will have beautiful scented, what pure white um, daffodils, narcissus. Um, oh, I forget the name. <laughs> what I have to do, I'll find the video for you and I'll put it in the link because you've still got time to do these. You can still um, plant up your spring bulbs for some indoor colour. Brilliant. So thank you ever so much for watching. Um, please, again, let us know in the comments about your gardens. We love to hear from you. Let us know your tips, tried, tested, things that you might have just heard. It's always really interesting to, to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye.